Welcome to SFG Top Performance. Today we have our regulars with us, Jason and Derek. Derek's going to bring us up to speed on some preseason trials he's got he's got planned. You bet. So with the weather this month, we haven't been able to do a lot of work out in the field, so it's been a lot of a lot of time to be able to do some planning for 2023 trials. That's that's another thing that's in my wheelhouse, so we always like to always like to bring something new up to or bring something new to the field or test something before we give out a recommendation to figure out what figure out what works and what we're going to want to recommend for already into 2024 I guess we always try to think a year or two ahead so kind of what I have lined up for this year trying uh, big, big one is I want to try to get um, some high yield soybeans in a in, in a block I guess I'm calling that like I want to I want to get 20 acres and just really push for that you know 75 to 80 bushel soybean on um, on average, over over 20 acre field, you could say we can get these strips that have high high yield beans. And kind of how I want to do, kind of how I want to do this is um, focus on sulfur and two shots of fungicide. Sulfur has been really popular on our corn acres over the past two to three years. We've given recommendations of um, putting more sulfur with corn and adding adding to it. And we've seen a lot of yield response in beans. There's still a lot of um, important ramica- ramifications with sulfur. Beans actually use more nitrogen than corn. They just make it themselves, but they still need that sulfur component to have a good ratio for it. So we're gonna try um, we're gonna try some liquid sulfur with the first pass chemical with that with a ATS product liquid um, liquid sulfur that we can put with that we can put with chemicals put on corn or beans. But just do something like ten or fifteen pounds of sulfur um, with the beans there. Then we're gonna do two shots of fungicide and kind of deciding on the timing on that we're going to do a normal one probably at r3 and i'm trying to decide whether to go early early or late and there's been different trials different trials out there with varying results that you know later is better keep those beans longer but then they're greener beans to harvest so it's a little bit a little bit of a trade-off there but i'm leaning towards the two shot of fungicide and um working working um, later 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 in the season on that Another new product that we're talking about this year, a uh, big issue was deer out in the fields. And it's something that something that we kind of been approached before and there's there's deer repellent products out there and I've done a little bit of a little bit of um, looking looking at those and there's a lot of there's a lot of different ones out there. And I know there's a lot of people that have tried them with varying results. There's the blood meal products, there's the peppermint products that they smell it and they don't want to go in there and um, so we we have a product lined up that uh, we're going to try just a few just a few acres you know do some 40s do some 80s and see 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 what works we don't know a lot about it it's a company we haven't worked with before but it's something that the deer aren't going to get any the deer aren't going to get any better so it, it's something worth a shot and there's some customer interest on it so that's just something something new we want to try to bring to the table so if anyone has interest in deer deer repellent products we're gonna we're gonna take a look at have a little bit of information don't know don't know if they'll work it's one of those things that um sometimes is hard to um hard to have the science behind it you know weed you you spray water hemp it's dead you know that works but with the deer repellent product it's hard to it's hard to know for sure but we're gonna we always want to try to look at those things just so we don't just so we don't miss because those deer it's easy i mean they could take 5 10 15 bushel in um an area pretty darn easy so that's that's just a couple things we're looking at looking at for this year. But Jason did like like you said, did you see any guys that had deer issues or that sort of thing this year? Oh, but definitely. You know, that's something over in smaller fields they they'll eat, you know, up to half of it, like you said. There's some spots, fifty, sixty bushel, pretty easy. So you know, sometimes that would be a benefit. But if you're a deer hunter then Maybe you don't want to see this product, so you know, it all depends on your on your perspective. Well, maybe you so, want your neighbor. Maybe you want your neighbor to spray it, so then it'll go, the deer all go to your deer plot over there. That would be an excellent thing. <laughs> you know, another thing that that's been an issue here this spring is, you know, last fall we talked about the dry weather. Hey, it's dry. Are we ever going to get any rain? No, doesn't seem like it's going to shut off. We we need this spring rain, so I don't think anybody's complaining too much, other than we're not getting any spring work done yet, but. I think our water holding capacity is up to where it needs to be. I see a lot of tile lines running. Mm-hmm. So I think we're pretty good there. I think our soil's charged again. So I think yep. we should have a good a good spring to get in there once it dries up, to get in there and plant and have the moisture we need to carry this <coughs> crop. Uh, and hopefully these trials and, and everything's going to work great. Hopefully we can get things done. So one question I have had a lot is, you know, a lot of falling hydrus went on. Is any of it leached? Is it all still there? And our ground hasn't got above 50 degrees since it was applied, so it hasn't tried, hasn't converted to the nitrates. So I don't believe it's leached at all. You know, there should be no no issues there yet. 
but there is you know the spring the nitrate testing or the tissue testing i'm sorry so you can always you know if you are concerned at all just do a tissue sample at, at b5 but there is no reason to be alarmed at all at this point because the ground hasn't warmed up enough for it to turn to nitrates and even those even because of those stabilizers even yes. like like you say the nitrogen hasn't converted over to nitrate even with the normal process and i'd say 90 percent of our fall um, anhydrous has stabilizer with it and that stuff sticks around for three months but it sticks around for three months you know above above freezing so you know mm -hmm. the months that it was real cold it's not losing its losing its value so there's still that stabilizer out there now working and it's Stabilizer, I know we always put it on in the fall, but it's it's working throughout the spring. It's working throughout the spring as well. Yes, and, and a lot of our fertilizer was in the northern area, was applied last fall. So, you know, we're sitting pretty good in, up north. I know down south they have a lot more work to do. But, you know, a lot of guys are ready to go to the field and plant. So it, they're wanting this little bit of moisture so they, they don't have to worry about what we ended up the fall with. So I think we're being set up for a good spring. You know, we still need to make sure we're doing everything right. and and spraying our pre's whenever we can get there and get them done and it's way too early now to talk about that but when this weather dries up it'll be a few more weeks and it'll be time to start so mm -hmm. we're not we're not that far away it won't be long and the planters will be in the ground and <laughs> we'll be in a whole different frame of mind and ready to go well, that's right. <laughs> really just a month away we could be doing all four or five things all at all at once which is normal it always hits and we'll we'll be ready for it charles is getting stuff getting stuff ready how is the equipment yep. going this year well, like you said it's going to change quick we're going to go from this rainy day to are we ever going to get in the field to crap it can slow down anytime but it happens every year we know it's coming uh, getting toolbars ready like you said wagons got some wagons we're moving around uh spray equipment it's still in the shed a lot of it for the most part it's ready to go it's just haven't got it out of the shed yet but for the most part, we're ready to go. People are trained up and uh, getting sheds stocked up. You're getting seed moved around where it needs to go. Just need the weather to cooperate so we can, you know, a little bit of green grass and warm weather. That's going to change the tone of everybody's mood right now. And But, you know, we'd like to get seed out to you and get chemicals stocked up. And it'll be here before we know it. So, well, I want to thank you guys for joining us this time. We will check in in two weeks, hopefully. <laughs>